Hello everyone, today we're going to look at an old pen, a vintage pen. Um, well, is it vintage? Yeah, I'd say it. If it's in the 60s, it's vintage probably. Or yeah. Anyway, so what I have here is a student pen. I'm going to call it a student pen. And it's Italian. Or I have been told it's Italian. And my research tells me it's Italian. And what it is, is a vis pen. V-I-S pen. And it's called the Autovac. Now, I, I like this little pen. It's, it, it's, okay, let's, let, let's take a quick look at it. So, it, it's a student pen. And the interesting thing about student pens, especially European student pens, is quite often a lot of them try to look like more famous brands because they were used by children and it was cool to have a fancy looking pen by a famous brand, even though it wasn't, you know? Um, so this one looks like a Parker, but it doesn't look like a Parker. <laughs> you know, the clip has this sort of arrow, but you know, this, it's a little bit more elaborate up here rather than, uh, you know, it doesn't really look like feathers, but it does look like feathers. It's not what I'd call the most sturdy little clip. It's a little, well, actually, it's not too bad. It's, it does sort of wobble that way, you know. But otherwise, it's perfectly functional. Even though I don't really use clips, I just stick it in the pocket or carry in the case. It has like a little black jewel on the top of the finial. It has that sort of cigar shape barrel kind of a chromed cap with a bit of sort of engraving lines here it feels quite nice but it's not the heaviest metal on the cap <coughs> and of course it was designed to look like a parker 51 because at the time parker 51 was the most influential pen and it's surprising how many European student pens from different brands copied the 51. And, and you can tell why, you know, it, it, it's a classic, right? Um, what attracted me to this pen was this rather beautiful ink window right here. And I, and that's one thing that I noticed a lot about uh, student pens is they often did have ink windows so that you could see how much ink was left in your pen and not and that's not exactly exclusive to, to student pens i think of far more expensive pens have ink windows like the lamy 2000 has an ink window some mont blancs have ink windows and i actually really like ink windows i think they're very attractive um personally and so this is a pen, Italian Viz pen. Now, I was told that Viz pen um, had some relation to the French brand Visor pen, but I don't know if it's a subsidiary. Um, I don't know if these pens were made under license um, and sold in Italy. But anyway, I, uh, that's another story. And uh, we'll look at that some other day. But it actually, it's a plastic pen. Let's take a little look at it. Um, Hood at nib. Um, it has sort of, now the nib is a, a cheap, I'm going to say it's a cheaply made nib, but it actually does the job. It had, the tipping is, is like a ball on the tip rather than like sometimes iridium tipped pens have a, are a little bit better than this. This looks like a ball is just stuck right on there. Um, it writes well. It's not the smoothest writer in the world. It's not the wettest flow, but it actually is, you know, not bad to write with. And I was just curious about it and I liked the look of it and I was, I'm interested in student pens and I picked it up. Now, in some ways, it, it looks like it should be a piston filler, but it's not. Uh, you unscrew it, 
and it takes quite a while to unscrew this pen. And it's what I call a syringe filler. This has a, you push that down and there's a little uh, rod in there that goes down and, and you pull it back and it, the ink comes up. Um, you can see the feed there, plastic. But it has nice lines. I like the lines. This is a piston filler that I've, or a syringe filler that I, I've seen many variations of it. Quite often, uh, the, the rod is made of plastic. This one is made of metal. Um, now, the, we're going to call it a, a piston filler, but the, it's a converter in some ways. But it seems to be glued on to the section, kind of heat sealed. And it's hard, you know, so uh, set in there pretty well. And that sort of reminds me of uh, Soviet era um, uh, pens, where it was, and what Eastern European pens, where the uh, converter is essentially glued onto the section. You probably could get that off if you were to spend some time with a, a heating apparatus just to try to break the glue, but I, I have no need to do that. It has a nice width to the barrel. It's, you know, it it holds. It feels nice in the hand. The ink window has these little ridges on it, so you do feel those. They're not sharp. Um, it's not a huge pen. Um, you can write with it unposted. It's a little small for me that way, so I do tend to post it. Um, and it's comfortable when it's posted. Um, what else can I say? Um, let's do a writing sample. <clears throat> now, like I said, it's not necessarily scratchy. And actually, it isn't scratchy. It's, but um, the quick brown fox jumps over. Now, there's no line variation. It's a stiff nib. And so I have Diamine Inkvent 2021, all the best in it. Recently, a friend, uh, a pen friend sent me a bunch of samples and I've been trying them out in different inks, different, the different inks and different pens. And I loaded the Inkvent into this pen. Um, it's a, it, and it feels very dry in this pen. It's almost immediately like dry. And I don't know if that's the ink or the pen. Um, when I write with it, it's not scratchy, but there is sort of a drag on the nib. You have, uh, I'm not, it's hard to, to say. Um, this is Rhodia. And I've had. I've been writing with the, this for a little, little while, and I'm using uh, in my journal. My journal right now is a endless recorder with Tomo River paper, and it seems a little smoother on the Tomo River paper. I have had tried other inks in this, and um, I find that it works best with a dark ink. And I found, I think I had Oxford in, Oxford Blue in it, and it worked quite nicely with that. So it's one of those pens where if you find the right ink, it really comes alive in some ways. And, you know, I'm going to continue to use the all the best in it for a while and keep just to see how I like it. But uh, I probably wouldn't ink it up again with all the best. Uh, I'll try all the best in probably a broader nibbed pen the next time just to see the shimmer but yeah um maybe a waterman ink would actually be quite nice in that something a little wetter maybe i'll have to find i'll have to try a few different other ones but it's a fun little pen it's a bit of history uh it's an attractive pen and it's you know it's a cheap student pen and for all it is well made <laughs> i like student pens they're fun they're, you know and they're quite interesting Lots of history there. So anyway, have you tried Visor Pen? Have you heard of Visor 
uh, not visor pen, viz pen. <laughs> Have you actually heard of visor pen? Let me know. What's the connection? Is there a connection? So yeah, the viz pen. Have you tried it? Uh, are there other brands that you, uh, other models of the viz pen? Uh, let me know in the comments. It's always fun to find out information. Sometimes it's hard to find out information uh, for some of the more obscure, obscure brands. So it's good to find out from people that know, right? So anyway, I hope you're having a great day. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, I invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.